WWDC 23 is done. We have a few hardware announcements and a few software announcements and a classic one more thing right at the end. Really, the highlight of the event was the VR headset, so let's just breeze through the other stuff. The MacBook Air is getting a spec and size bump. It's now running the M2 chip and also comes in a new 15 inch body. The bigger size means it will also be getting bigger and better speakers and a bigger battery that will be good for 18 hours before you seek a power outlet. Oh, and it's going for 1299 US dollars in the US. Very much typical pricing which is in line with the likes of the Dell XPS 15 or the HP NV15. Of course, performance numbers are a lot higher on the MacBook thanks to that Apple silicon. The Mac also got two big updates. The Mac Studio gets the M2 chip and finally, the cheese grater Mac Pro gets Apple silicon with the top spec configuration getting the M2 Ultra chip and 192 gigabytes of unified memory. It's probably the most powerful desktop on the planet with Apple claiming it is three times faster than the most powerful Intel based Mac Pro. It will also come in two form factors, a standard vertical tower configuration and a horizontal rack mount configuration. The Mac Studio is more than enough power for the average consumer, but if you are above average, then the Mac Pro with Apple's mind-bending fast Apple silicon now exists. The Mac Studio will be going for a sensible and somewhat average consumer friendly uh, $1,999 in the US. The Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra chip and the 192 gigabytes of unified memory will be going for an elite $6,999 in the US. Then you have some software stuff, starting with the iOS 17. Apple is now using a new language model in the keyboard for autocorrect. Aside from just being your spell check nanny and grammar sheriff, it's now also learning the words you type and type often so that you don't need to be fiddling around too much typing a word differently from what the dictionary spelling forces you to type. And if there are sentences that you frequently type, it'll learn those too so that you just click once to autocomplete the whole thing. Similar to what Google does in Gmail with word and sentence autocomplete suggestions. Voicemail also now has live transcription that allows you to read your voicemails in the event that you can't really listen to them. You can also set up call cards which add some custom full screen caller images as well as themes for contacts to help you sort and easily identify if it's your boss or your spouse calling. There is also standby, a mode that you can customize that essentially shows you some glance information when your phone is set on a dock in landscape mode. It will show you information like the clock, the date, alarms, and it's fully customizable so you can just put some custom wallpapers or show certain information just to jazz it up. Something to keep your iPhone useful when it's not in use. Then of course, the one more thing, Apple Vision Pro, an augmented reality headset made by Apple the Apple way. It's a headset with cameras, screens, sensors, and speakers, so yes, Competition to the Microsoft HoloLens too, but where Microsoft HoloLens went the route of industrial use, Vision Pro is going more with the route of home and office use. Each eye is looking into a super sharp display which is getting a live video feed of where your face is pointing with the forward facing cameras. So you can see everything that is happening in your surroundings and any apps that you are playing with are overlaid on the real world environment. To navigate the UI, you use your eyes to point at stuff and your hands to select and interact with stuff. There are no controllers required on this one. It's a standalone headset, meaning all the bits that make it work are within the headset itself. It's running the M2 chip as well as a dedicated chip called R1 for processing all the sensor data in real time. This should, according to Apple, reduce latency to ridiculously low levels so that interaction with the headset feels very natural. So, promo material focuses on how this headset is good for three main things, entertainment, work, and memories. Okay, so memories are pretty simple. This headset is made for augmented reality and is excellent at presenting 3D stuff. Apple also made the Vision Pro capable of capturing 3D images with its forward-facing cameras, images that are best viewed within the headset. 
the images will have depth information that mimics what our eyes see in real life, adding to the viewing experience so long as you view them with the headset. It feels like a bit of a novelty right now, but we'll see how it catches on. Work primarily involves individuals working from home or working remotely. You can essentially set up your office in a space that is most comfortable for you and have multiple virtual apps floating all around you. I'm not yet sold on the productivity aspect of certain types of work like typing a document or video editing or even a PowerPoint presentation. I still feel like those need that tactility of a keyboard. As a standalone device, I don't think you can do meaningful work on it. Where I am most excited about is when it becomes an extension of my laptop screen. Instead of me needing a bigger monitor, I can just use the headset for that purpose and still have my laptop's keyboard and mouse as my primary forms of input. Even the idea of being able to just lay out browser tabs side by side, having a spreadsheet in one window and another app in another, and only having to move my head to view them instead of scrolling through apps. I think it will boost productivity quite a bit, but all this will be the headset operating as your computer's external display. Entertainment is probably the most polished aspect of the headset. So to ensure a realistic and lifelike audio experience, they developed sound ray tracing, which is essentially a way of gathering data on the environment that you're in and developing a sound profile of the audio that best suits the environment you're in. It'll assess if your room has couches, walls, etc. to try and fine tune the audio experience to what naturally occurs in such a room. You have a virtual screen as big as 100 inches diagonally, meaning watching movies should be really immersive, which I think is going to be next level when viewing 3D movie content. It can also dim your surroundings such that you can focus on the content you're watching without getting completely detached from your environment. And to show how serious they are about entertainment, Apple and Disney have teamed up to offer a lot of content on Vision Pro. Oh, and there will be some games coming to the headset complete with game controller support. The Vision Pro will be going for a hefty $3,499, which interestingly enough, is the same price as the base Microsoft HoloLens 2. Vision Pro will come with a battery pack that will give it two hours of runtime, and if you require a full day's usage, you can just keep it plugged in onto a power source. It's obviously a bummer that to really get the most out of it, you'll need to be very much invested in the Apple ecosystem. If you fancy getting one though, Apple will start selling them next year. That's pretty much the rundown of WWDC 23. Like and subscribe.